is your integrated three lecture for 11.2.1. How can I plot points in three dimensions? So we're going to create a three dimensional model. So I'm going to, um, for time's sake, I'm going to just kind of skip through a little bit. I'm going to read the second paragraph where it says, when you worked with graphs in previous courses, you represented points, the number line, and curves in a two-dimensional -dimen flat surface called the XY plane. So far, you've been able, you've only been able to represent relationships with at most two unknowns, usually the variables X and Y. However, many problems have more than two unknowns. Today, you and your team will build a model that will help you graph in three dimensions. As you work on this lesson, consider the following questions. So how can we plot a point in three dimensions? That's what I'm going to show you. How can we write coordinates of a point in three dimensions? And how can we throw, uh, show three dimensions on flat paper? So that's basically what we're going to do. It's unfortunate that we're not together. Um, it would be more fun for you if you could actually build these. Uh, we're going to do just these uh, first three problems. So it's 11-50 says to graph solutions to equations with three variables, you need to use a three-dimensional coordinate system. So um, yeah, it just says to get one and make it. So you guys are used to, you've always done it like this. The, the vertical axis is always y, and this is always x, and you get these ordered pairs. And you write them as 3, 2, or whatever. And we know they're ordered pairs, so this is always x, and this is y. Well, it turns out if you have three dimensions, then you're going to have x, y, z. And how are we going to show that? Well, that's that's kind of what we're going to learn um, right now. So basically, I just um, I made a three-dimensional model. And it's conventional for this axis over here on the left to be the x-axis, which confuses me a little bit because I always want it to be this one. But there's the x-axis over here. And the y-axis here. Can you see that? And that's the z-axis going up. The z-axis always goes up and down. And this thing is actually just one quadrant. Actually, it's one octant, because there are going to be eight of these to make up the three-dimensional, well, I don't want to say plane, but your three-dimensional graph. So this is just the positive. Um, like, see on here, we have, like, we have four quadrants. Oops. Four quadrants, one, two, three, four. Well, this is just, you can say this is quadrant one, but then there'd be another one, and there, there'd be four of them, and then there'd be some for negative stuff, too. We're not going to get too much into this this year, but um, basically, the origin is on this model is going to be right there. And then that's pretty much what we learn about on 1150. 1151 says, place a small marker on the bottom surface of your model at the point where x equals 4 and y equals 2. So by a small marker, they meant like a little, I don't know, a little block or maybe a little bingo chip or something. Um, 4, comma, or 4 and 2. So x is 4. Remember, this is the um, origin. So x is 1, 2, 3, 4. And see how this is the y-axis? Y is 2. So I would place something right here. I, don't need, I didn't even get anything to place. I'm just going to place the bottom of my pen there. And then I'm supposed to uh, locate the point where x Oh, I'm supposed to lift it three units up. Okay, so I have x is 4, y is 2, and then I'm going to lift my pencil up 
three units, and you probably can't tell that I'm right. I'm raising my pencil up by three units. So <laughs> you can't even tell on the camera, can you? This spot right here where my finger is, is, three, is um, how would I write that? I would write it four comma two comma three. So this is X, Y, Z. So that's where X is four. This is the X is four. Y is two. And then I'm, you can't tell that I'm doing this, but I'm lifting my pencil up by three and hovering right above that spot. See, there's space in between my pencil and the, and the um, paper. Okay, that's, that's how you can do it with three dimensions. That's how you can um, specify a point in three dimensions. And then letter B says, now locate the point where X is three, Y is four, and Z is two. So X, the point where X is three, Y is four, and Z is two, so I'm lifting my pencil up by two, but you can't tell, but see how I, whoops. Um, so three, four, two, three, four, I'm up two. So I've located the spot, and then how do I write it? Well, that's easy, three, four, two, X, Y, Z, I hope that makes enough sense to you. We're going to show you um, how to write it on paper, on a flat paper too. Um, the model you created is only one portion of the entire three-dimensional coordinate system used to represent three dimensions mathematically. So it, it asks you how many models would you need to put together to create a model that represents the entire three-dimensional coordinate system? Well, if I have negative coordinates, this is only the positive. This only has positive. Negative on the y-axis, it would be like <laughs> on the other on the other side of this paper, right? That would be negative y's. And negative x's would be back here. And then this is z going up and down. Negative z would be down there. So there'd actually be eight of these, four on the top and then four like underneath. So, and then this one talks about using cubes to build things. And normally I would let you do this if we were together in class, but we are not. But if I did build a two by two by two cube, and I set it so that it's one of its corners is right here. It'd be two by two. And then I'm going up two, you can't tell. It'd be two by two by two. And the the outermost corner would be two comma two comma two. And if I built a, not a cube, but a, a rectangle that was two by one, by three, then I would go X is two, Y is one, and then I'm lifting my pen up by three. And I would have built that out of cubes and you'd be able to see that outer corner here. And I would denote it as two comma one comma three, and that's an X and a Y and a Z. And then now letter C says draw and label a three-dimensional coordinate system on isometric dot paper, as shown at the right. Now, you might be sad if you don't have any dot paper, but you, you can still do this without dot paper. So, and then you add the prism to your drawing. So, I'm going to just go ahead and show you how to draw three dimensions. Let's just, let's just go ahead and plot two points, and then we'll call it a day. So, the way that you do this, whether or not you have dot paper, is you kind of make a picture that looks a little bit like this. You call this X, and you call this Y, and you call this Z. And then if I want to go um, four comma two comma three, I just show four little lines, one, two, 
directory four, and then I show two lines on the Y. And I just draw it, try to draw it like it looks like it's in space. And then on Z, I'm just going to draw three tick marks. And then I'm just going to draw like a little point. I don't know. I'll just draw it like that. So it's supposed to look, it doesn't look that good, but it's because I have the three dots right here, you're supposed to assume that this is um, up by three, like one, two, three. Okay, it doesn't look that great. I think I have a nicer picture for you somewhere. Let's get a nicer picture. Oh. Well, that's the nicest picture you're going to get, I think. Um, let's try another one. Let's do um, 3, 4, 2. So you draw it. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2. And then you just, this is, remember, X, Y, Z. And you just show it like it's going up. I'm not the best artist. You can even go like that if you want to, to show that it's two. But we know that the height, we can see that the um, length and width are, you know, three and four. We can see that the height is two because we're looking right here. Or you can draw some little tick marks on there. Oops, I should have done it like this. It's supposed to be two. So um, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. It's just, um, just I think there's only two sections on this. So anyway, that's your introduction to it. And then you can try some homework problems, and we'll talk more about it during the next lesson.